In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Look at My Star Trek Toys. Boy, we've got a fun episode for you. It's going to be fun for you, but I think it's going to be fun for Mike. Because this week, we are doing the movie Big Bads. The so, bad guys from the movies. Let me say, Keith, I, yeah. en I enjoy looking at the same five characters in different uniforms as much as the next guy. <laughs> But when you throw me weird and wildies, that's when I get excited. And I'm excited for today because I know that after today or before today, at some point, I will have to listen to the reckoning of your top 40 uh, toys I hope they make because the internet had some thoughts. So uh, we'll get to that shortly. Yes, indeed. Also going to be fun, weird figures. But uh, so this week we are talking about all of the bad guys from the movie era that they made. Now, unfortunately, they didn't make uh, figures past Star Trek Generations in the 4.5 inch scale. So this is the bad guys from Star Trek 2, because there really wasn't a bad guy in Star Trek 1, through Generations. So uh, these are going to be fun. We've got amazing uh, guest stars and actors who are represented in these figures. So let us waste just a little bit more of your time and remind you to do us a favor, like and subscribe, because uh, it really, really helps us. The more subscribers we get, the more videos we can put out. So boom, boom, boom. Do it and comment below. All right, so let us begin. With no further ado, last episode we talked a lot about Star Trek Generations, and guess what? We're going to do it some more, and we're going to start with figure number 6929, Lursa! Okay, uh, we are going to start... Jeez! <laughs> Mike has never seen the Duras sisters before. Look out. Oh, my goodness. I have. <laughs> Thank God she beamed in backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the the Duras sisters do have some memorable characteristics, or perhaps memorable characteristics mm. uh, well played, as sir. a... Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Oh, I'm so I'm such a good podcaster. All right, so this is the first of the Duras sisters, Lursa, played by Barbara Marsh. Now, this was a character that showed up in Star Trek Generations, which is the first Next Generation movie in 1994, but we saw the Duras sisters a couple of times before that. We first saw them in Redemption, on The Next Generation, they did three episodes of The Next Generation, and they also did an episode of Deep Space Nine. Uh, so this is uh, the first of the Duras sisters. Tell me your thoughts. I just want to know everything you, you think here about the Duras sisters. Well... Uh, about about Lursa. We'll, we'll, we'll meet Beitor uh, soon. Well, I'll say this. Uh, you know, we've talked before about, uh, be it S Star Trek or be it Playmates or whatnot, uh, accentuating certain characteristics of the female figures. However, in this case, at least it's in an awesome outfit. The sculpting's incredible. That little, like, boob window is really cool and 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 fashioned well into the entire piece. So I think it's pretty badass. Uh, and this character, I, I want to know more, clearly uh, a pretty badass Klingon. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, and this one, you know, it, when, it, when it comes to the boob window, this one we can't blame on Playmates because that is ve very much the uh, the character's design and is a feature of it throughout the entire series. Can you talk so, to me real uh, quick about just in, in, in basic terms, and, and I don't mean this with any sort of tongue in any cheek, what the Klingons, uh, I know a, a bit about their sort of base uh, 
emotionality not being much, right? Like, what is their what is their sexual energy as portrayed in the show? They have a lot of it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes, no, it, they it they are definitely uh, it's aggressive. It can be violent, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, but it is still very much honor based. Okay. So uh, they 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 do not you know just like run around freely getting it on. Uh, but when they do, it's uh, it's enthusiastic. There's biting involved, a lot of growling, okay. uh, kind of kind of what you would imagine. Mm-hmm. So there's a uh, there's there's a lot more there. But you know, if you're not another Klingon, uh, you might need a trip to the uh, to the doctor when it's all done. Well, Keith, so, it seems like you're really into this uh, girl. I don't want to cramp your style, so let me ask you this question: Does she have yeah. a sister? Oh, <laughs> yes. It's so funny that you ask. Why don't we hop over to six nine two eight and meet the sister? <laughs> Guess what? We met Lursa. Here is her sister, Bator. Played by Gwyneth Walsh, who uh, they're always together. So uh, all of the episodes I mentioned before that Lursa was in, Bator's in too, and uh, they are the uh, the evil sisters. And uh, no spoilers, but uh, they didn't appear after Star Trek Generations. Mm. But Gwyneth Walsh, the actress, also did an episode of Voyager. She was Chief Examiner Namira in Random Thoughts. Mm. So. Uh, very similar figure. In fact, it's really hard. It's a little bit hard to distinguish which one is which. I was only able to really do that by their belt uh, being well, a little bit different. No, the the uniforms are a little different, right? The sculpt, the the texturing of the of the coat is different on Lursa, if I'm not mistaken. It is a little bit. You know what? You know how we can tell. Mm, Why don't we do hop it. over to Toy Cam? Toy Cam. Toy Camp, will they stand up? I don't know. Okay. So here they are, side by side. I'm going to have to hold them up. So you can see there there is a little bit of texture difference, a little bit of difference on the belt, uh, but they're pretty darn similar. Yeah, the facial sculpting is definitely different, so at least they gave it them is. an individual look, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both really cool. Uh, designs. They're really cool outfits. I mean, the costume design on it, you know, while obviously uh, drawing attention to certain things is a very cool and and powerful uh, outfit that they have. And uh, so the, I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Now you'll I, notice... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, this sort of Klingon uh, skeletal cranial uh, piece mm-hmm. yep. is... Is such a unique. I've always thought is such a unique combination of gross and cool. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, and it 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 feels like um, of all of the weird little ridges and sculptures and stuff that they do, and you know, so much of it was done to save money. Like you're an alien, we just need a little little goober on your nose, right? Then you're an entire <laughs> species from millions of light years away. It, is, it look, came up exactly the same, just minus the goober. But these actually, I think, are cool because they you can sort of see an evolutionary purpose for them. Because the Klingons, you know, are warriors. And so they're they're battling in a lot of hand-to-hand combat, and having the cranial ridges there to protect your head uh make a lot of sense if you're doing a lot of physical combat. So I, I get it. I get why why that would be there. I think it makes sense, and it looks super cool. And uh, of course, they had to do some explaining. They had some explaining to do because <laughs> uh, in the original versions of the Klingons in the original series, yeah, they didn't have any of that. They were just people painted a little bit brown. So, eek. Uh, yeah. So that was uh, so. But they did when in Enterprise, they finally did explain what happened. They did a nod to it in Deep Space Nine, which was pretty funny, but Enterprise, they kind of explained what happened. And it actually made sense and was tied to another figure we're going to talk about. But while we're at it, let us just move forward. We, 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 can't, we can't stay with the Duras sisters forever as much as we would like to. Let us talk about the other big bad in Star Trek Generations, because there were three of them. We're going to look at 6925 Dr. Saurian. Oh, Malcolm McDowell. 
played by legendary actor Malcolm McDowell, played uh, Dr. Saurian the Elorian, who uh, is the same species as Guinan, which is a, a, a tremendously long-lived and mysteriously powered species. Uh, so he spends the whole movie trying to get into the Nexus, blah, blah, blah. He chews some scenery, and he fights both Kirk and Picard in the movie. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, oop, I love a fidget, Keith, and I want to fidget with this figure. As weird as that sounds, all those... I don't know what to say about that. All those ridges, I just want to kind of run my fingernail over it. It looks very cool. Like, <laughs> neat... <laughs> Neat uniform. Do you have it out? Can you just like run your finger your fingers around? It looks very fun I, to touch. I I I I can, but now I feel weird about it. So <laughs> yeah, maybe don't. I, I don't um, think I'm ever gonna touch the figure again now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's uh I would I didn't know he was in uh Star Trek, so I would have just thought, hey, that's some well, I don't know that I recognize it was Malcolm McDowell either. So <laughs> Well, yeah, well there's <clears throat> there's that. Well, he, not only is he in Star Trek, but I believe he is the uncle of Alexander Siddig, who plays hey. Dr. Bashir on Deep Space Nine. Cool. So it's in the family. Uh, now, is you that know, what he wears also, in the movie? Because it doesn't look like it. That is, well, it is what he wears. It is the closest, as close an approximation as they're going to get mm. uh, on this figure. You know, again, no articulation from the generation figures, and it's it's pretty basic. Honestly, it I I wish that they had zhuzhed up his mm. outfit a bit because it's it kind of looks like he's just wearing black jammies. Is he the biggest bad or just a big bad? No, he is the biggest bad in the movie. Although, uh, no spoilers, but Lursa and Bator, for reasons beyond my understanding, are uh, responsible for possibly destroying something pretty important, and uh, so that. Uh, that was a big deal. Hmm. I, I don't know why I'm trying to protect spoilers from a movie from 1994 hmm. for fans of Star Trek. You all know what happens. But it's Mike. I'm, I'm protecting spoilers from Mike. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying that's the Enterprise D in that uh, in that little picture there. And next time it might be the Enterprise E. So just wow, saying. Wow, Keith. Just saying. And I know that uh, that the that shot... There's an amazing shot in the movie that they had to do practically with uh, with models. Well, between those and two sisters and the way the figures represent them, I imagine that they had to get rid of some ballast. They, yes, they, <laughs> they, they did. They did. <laughs> All right. Well, let us move forward by moving backwards. We're, we're kind of moving chronologically backwards because we're going to now go from Star Trek 7 and talk about Star Trek 6 and... Talk about figure six, four, five, eight, General Chang. All right. Take a look at that, Mike. Wow. And of course, played by wow. Oscar winner Christopher Plummer as uh, a bald Klingon, bald one eyed Klingon obsessed with Shakespeare. Huh. Uh, very. Cool. He's less Klingon. -y. We were just talking about their head sculpture, and he's got the least Klingon-y, Klingon How do you say that? klingon -y. Head. <laughs> Klingonish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he obviously, Christopher Plummer was like, you know what? I would like to look a little bit like me still. <laughs> it's <laughs> in his writer. Some, it, I, I think it might have been. And uh, so he had a very unique look. Uh, well, speaking as, of, is that is that choice of like bi bifurcated mustache? Is that general to the Klingon, or that's that's specific to this guy? That's specific to this guy. That that this is a uh, a lot of this is specific to uh, to this character, uh, and you can see in the picture there he's got some pretty rocking knee pads. Yeah. Uh, even though the uh, on the figure his boots go up much higher than his knees. Yes, so that's, they do. that's a, mm -hmm. a, a little 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 error there. But uh nonetheless, so this movie was Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, which came out in 1991, uh, which was the first Star Trek movie I saw in the theaters. And uh if you're paying attention to our intro at the beginning, there's a little newspaper article featuring eleven-year-old me 
in my homemade Star Trek outfit, which my wife was like, you're putting that on the internet? Well, I did anyway. Uh, And so I went to a little mini Star Trek convention uh, that day before and then saw the movie. So we we watched, uh, I think, Star Trek 3 and 4 before we all went over to see 6 in the theaters. So I definitely have uh, have an affinity for this movie. It's also a very uh, good movie and a bit of a uh, correction from Star Trek V. So uh, any other thoughts on General Chang here? He looks like my friend Jacob, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. I'll have to show you that <laughs> off air. That is some, you know, really detailed and <laughs> really specific analysis. <laughs> well, Jacob, if you're listening, I bet you were excited, but... He's not. <laughs> All right. Well, so that was the uh, main adversary for our good friends Kirk and Spock and McCoy. But while uh, this movie took place, Kirk and McCoy ended up going to Klingon prison... Uh, on uh, in in this uh, sort of frozen prison wasteland, and run and ran into figure number six four five seven, Martia the shapeshifter. Played by supermodel and actress Iman, was a uh, shape shifting criminal who uh. Do it, does she help them? Does she not help them? Does she do a little bit of both? You'll have to watch Star Trek VI to find out. Uh, but yeah, so this was a interesting character, and did uh, they did a lot of early morphing, uh, tech, you know, uh, effects, which were actually pretty good. Uh, holds up relatively well, especially from 1991. Digital morphing effects. Uh, what do you What do you think here? Mike? So get ready for it. So far, my favorite figure of of this series. Yeah, yeah. because I love a costume sculpting, and this you well just from the way I get to see it, which is great. What what's well shot? Like you couldn't convince me that that isn't a second piece. Like that that's that that's all one sculpted piece is incredible to me. The texturing, the way the fit flows on her. As well as the imma- the immaculate uh, like footwear, sign up kind of like sheep. Her boots. Uggs. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> very expensive Uggs. Uh, I wish the hair was a little better colored, as unique as the the actual character design. But you know, this is great. Yeah. I love it. No, it's a it's a it's a good figure. Now we are also now out of the generations line. So welcome back, articulation. Yeah. Right. And welcome back. A little details. So, and I'll, I'll, you know what? Let's go to Toy Cam, and I'll show you, show you some of this. Uh, because you like this figure, let's take a, let's take a better look. So, first off, look, we have elbow articulation, mm-hmm. and we have, we articulate this way as well. And, uh, and you can see that her little scarf there has a little bit of movement to it, a little bit of flow, and uh, just a lot of great detail work in this figure. Uh, it's too bad it can't morph mm-hmm. like the other one does because uh, there's a fun scene where uh, Kirk fights Kirk. So that's fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, really cool figure. Cool character and uh, really fun part of that movie too. Uh, Star Trek Six underrated. I think it's one of the better of the Star Trek movies uh, and it was done on a much smaller budget uh, but they did a really, really good job with it. A lot of memorable stuff from Star Trek Six, folks. It's a good movie. Hot take. All right. Hot, Hot take. take. Yeah. Woo. Just throwing some fire here on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> on the Star Trek so Keith likes Star Trek 6. Woo. Tough. All right. Well, you know what? We would do, uh, we'd go back to Star Trek 5, but uh, the, their big bad was God and sort of a fake God, so they didn't make a figure, and let's just move on and pretend that Star Trek V didn't happen. Okay. And uh, Star Trek IV, who's the big bad? Uh, over over uh, hunting of whales, hard to represent in a figure. Fantastic movie, but uh, there's no real big bad. So we have to go even further, all the way back to Star Trek III, 
and take a look at 6459 Commander Krug. And, uh, oh, my, yeah. Marty! Uh, Marty! Marty! Guess what it is? It's Christopher Lloyd in Star Trek 3 as Commander Krug. Just hit me with it. Go! That is now, you want to talk about Shakespearean. That's the kind of Shakespearean facial hair I would have expected to see on Christopher Plummer, but instead we've got it for Christopher Lloyd, and I guess we're going to deal with it. We've got the, uh, uh, you see, the Baldrick is there, is yeah. intact. I'm glad to see it. Footwear awesome, great Klingon figure, love the ponytail. Not my favorite of the Klingons, but I mean, it's Christopher Lloyd, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's Christopher. It's Christopher Lloyd, <clears throat> and it's interesting because if you look at the picture of him there, he doesn't have a baldric. So it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird that he's got one in the figure. I, you know, uh, Star Trek three fans hit me up. Does he wear ever wear one in the movie, or is this a reusing of a wharf <laughs> mold from something else? I'm a he little. He definitely un- this facial sculpture leaves a little to be desired. That doesn't look anything like him, but. No, no. Uh, hold on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and look at the... Yeah? Does he ever wear a baldric? Unclear. Anyway, it's still a really cool figure. He's got spikes on his shoes. Mm-hmm. He's got some gold and silver and black. I mean, honestly, the Klingon uniforms just look awesome. Sometimes they... it's weird. Like, this is one of those examples. Like, I, if you took his arm out of the socket and compared it to his leg, they'd be the same length. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they do they they do have the Klingons with like gigantic arms yeah. and gigantic hands, which are uh which are a little weird because they don't have gigantic arms and hands in real life. But uh I don't know, maybe they maybe they're trying to represent it and just couldn't do it more on film because, you know, humans played them. Mm-hmm. Uh so Christopher Lloyd here, this was the year before Back to the Future. Oh, so interesting. Okay. we only knew him from Taxi and uh, uh, and Cuckoo's Nest at this point. So uh, an interesting performance to have him. It was it. It's more startling now to see him portray this character and to fight Kirk because of Doc Brown. But it was mm-hmm. less so then. Uh, and of course, this was from Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock in 1984. And uh, speaking of people who are. Klingons responsible for wiping out the Enterprise. Uh, the Enterprise, the original Enterprise goes down in this movie too. Because uh, they wanted to make a new one, although they didn't make it really any different. <laughs> or it, it wasn't much different uh, as opposed to the D and the E are, are sort of reshaped a little bit. So uh, anyway, so that's that. Now, keep, now should yeah. we... Jump into uh, Krug's DeLorean here and Krug? 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 Krug, I think. Uh, should we jump into this Klingon's DeLorean and go back in time a little bit further to the bad guy? The bad guy. Yes. Yes, we should. Uh, but remind me, uh, I didn't show you the box for uh, oh, Lursa. Yes. But we'll, we'll, we'll do that at the end. So uh, stay tuned, folks. We're going to look at the box. For Lursa. But first, <laughs> I know everyone's like, oh my God, I can't wait. But first. Isn't it weird, though, that as a kid, all you wanted to do was rip things open, and now as an adult, you want to see them in the box? It's definitely, definitely true. Well, it's, you know, it's a different part of your brain. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Mike, I think you should give us your very best introduction in the Shatnerian style Come for on! 6, 4, 5, 6. I might have hurt myself. Oh boy, here he is, played by Ricardo Montalban from Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan in 1982. This character first showed up in the original series in the episode Space Seed before coming back for revenge in uh, what is widely regarded as the best Star Trek movie, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Now, uh, Mike, you don't know this. But uh, there's a whole mess of people uh, shouting at their YouTube screens right now saying, what the hell? That's not the con figure. Because this con, uh, all of the blood and battle damage 
is custom. Oh. Uh, I got this figure uh, when I bought, uh, was a very serious collector's collection. Um, somebody put it all up on eBay in a whole bunch of lots, and I bought as many of them as they could, included a bunch of custom figures, including this one. So the blood painted onto his face, chest, and arms was uh, was done by hand as part of a custom. Well, that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can't uh, get up in there in that case. Get so all up in the gore. We can uh, enjoy it ourselves. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's see if I can do it. Ready for it? Let's do this I, thing. I, I can't wait. Oh, there it is. So some uh, really good... Uh, custom paint work on uh, on that figure. I don't actually have a non bloody con. I have to add that to my collection. Uh, but uh, really cool, good work. Although they do cover up some of those iconic Montalban pecs, which everybody thought were fake, but nope, they're real. So when you see <laughs> Wrath of Khan, that is those were the guns he was carrying with him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, pretty awesome. Love it that it's custom. Uh, what looks like, is the hair custom as well? Yeah, he really went in there with some of the whites. It's cool. That's a cool figure, man, I have to say. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really interesting. It was one of those things where, um, you know, you go on eBay, you never know what's going to show up there. And obviously... A very serious collector, you know, might have might have passed away or had moved on to other things, and they just and whoever put them up on eBay didn't quite know what they had, mm. and so you got to steal. The, uh, oh, check out that belt; it's cool too. That that the whole figure is really cool. The sculpting of the pants is really cool. Well, I it, mean, you're doing con. You can't half-ass your con figure. Yeah, like I that. Mean, like the now. detailing up front is really neat too. Let's see. Let me get in on that. Is it weird that I like to like zoom in and really just like check this stuff out? Sorry, it's I'm it's doing not it. as weird as it wanting. To, it's not as weird as uh, as rubbing Doctor Sorian. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I'm still into that. Poor Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm, if you're watching, I apologize. So is all the blood on the arms and stuff custom as well? It's all custom. Yeah. Oh wow, it's really well done. Yeah, uh, yeah. So on this, you know, in these lots, they had a bunch of customs. Um, and then they had the whole line of the Target exclusive 4.5 inch movie era of the next gen all just there in one lot all by themselves without really noting what they were. And I got all of them, I think, for like 100 bucks with like six or seven other figures. I was That's jacked, cool. excited to get them. All right. Well, one last thing because uh, we're going to pay off our promises. Let's hop back over to Toy Cam and take a look at the Star Trek Generations series packaging. Here we go. Our, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so these are what the Generations packaging looked like. We have a painting of, of uh, Kirk and Picard. Picard wearing what he wears later in the movie, the Deep Space Nine era uniforms. Uh, which is interesting. Because we talked about in the episode about this, they had to produce the figures with the new unused uniforms. But the packaging was clearly done closer, or was later, because it's represented that that Picard is wearing the Deep Space Nine era uniforms. So uh, whoever was designing the package was like, oh, crap. But they at least got that right. So we see Lursa here with her choking hazards. Uh, she has some Klingon weaponry, of course, and the uh, the iconic Batleth. And on the back, you can see they did a, a bunch of figures from this line. And uh, all of them came with a Star Trek Generations little poster uh, behind the figure there. Just a, I think it's pretty much like eight and a half by 11. Just a little fold up poster for the movie that they came with. Thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams. Love it. Uh, they do a great job with the packaging. Always have. Uh, always have, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right, folks. You have now checked out the movie Big Bads from the Playmates 4.5-inch line. Uh, Mike, why don't you tell them how they can communicate with us and tell me what I got wrong, tell me what I got right. Just talk about Star Trek. I've actually been pretty surprised that 
maybe not surprised. I guess, like I had, I've said a few times, I feared coming into this podcast only because not a big Star Trek guy. I'm just kind of in it to help you out Yet. and look at your toys and just live vicariously through you rubbing some of them. Uh, and you know, you hear some uh, some negative feedback uh, from the passion with which a lot of Star Trek fans uh, operate. But I've not found that to be the case. I found everybody to be really. Uh, fun and engaging and welcoming on the comments and the emails we've gotten. And if you want to be part of that fun and welcoming audience, you can write us at look at my Star Trek toys at gmail.com. Check mm -hmm. us out right here on the YouTubes, comment below, and or check out our Instagram at Star Trek Toys. That's right. And uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and uh, we will keep putting out these videos because they're so much fun to do. Uh, till next week, you have been watching... Look at my Star Trek toys!